Good day, everyone. So a lot of you guys have been asking me some interesting questions in regards to doing veil ploy. So I figured I'd start off with doing the most basic of all stuff and answering the most frequent answers a lot of you guys have been asking me on YouTube. So one of the questions is where exactly do I get my veils from? Now um, this veil is about at least um, just you know a little bit over the size of my body. Uh, it's close to about two meters. Um, I actually got it off Silk Bamboo. There will be a link in the description. Um, she has a variety of different veil ploy. Um, she does a fan, she does just generic veils, she always has different colours as well. So there's different styles, there's different lengths, and I highly do suggest if you're interested in getting into veil ploy in a more uh, professional colour, or you just want to you know, buy something that's actually going to work better than the eBay ones, I um, highly suggest going down into the link in the description and um, giving this video a thumbs up. So when you do get your veil, you do also want to make sure that it fits the right length, and how to measure this is by doing this. Now, usually your chain should be at least by in at least in the armpit, which does come down to me. You obviously have you know a keychain area where you can have your finger sitting there, or you can also have the end part here, which is what I love about when I am buying off um, silk bamboo because you can do this. Um, as you guys know, to do the generic hold is very simple. There you guys see, just slip two fingers in there and just go over like that. Very simple and easy. It makes for spinning. Very simple and easy. When I am spinning, I do prefer to use the key because uh, I also do prefer to do a little bit of juggling. It makes it a lot easier for picking up veils and throw them to the side when you do want to do that. Now, there will be another video I'll do eventually um, in regards to how to take care of your veils. As you can see, this one's a bit dirty. I've had these for probably at least two years, maybe a little bit more. Um, they're fantastic veils. They're very endurance. As you guys can see, the fabric is very nice, silky, very floppy, you know. It really has an amazing effect when you're out there doing some veil ploy. But I'm going to be looking at doing some of the more basic stuff with you guys, focusing on how to warm up before you start doing veils, and just things to keep in mind as well. Also, apologies, you guys might be hearing some aeroplanes going overhead. So as you guys can see here, I don't have my veils, and this is how I practically start off with doing your warm-ups. Now, my warm-ups mainly focus on my shoulders and my arms, because they're the main things that you're using when you're doing veil ploy. You can also do some leg warm-ups, which I'll sort of show a few simple things there, but I'm not going to get too in-depth, as your shoulders are the main important thing, as well as your wrists. So one of the biggest things I do are simple like this, over the arm. Imagine that you're a bit of a cricketer, you're pitching just do that and I do that forwards and I do that backwards as well and I do this on both arms because it's very important since that this main joint up here is going to be doing a lot of the action movement as well as your wrist so they're two things that you want to keep in great condition so again focus on the other arm as well you don't want to cause any um, problems you can warm up for however long you feel um, just make sure that there's nothing that's going to be too tight um, or too sore because if you're feeling a little bit you know not like you're moving properly you don't want to uh, take the risk of actually injuring yourself. Another really quick, simple, easy move is to just simply bring your arm up overhead, pull the elbow in, and hold it in like this. And I'll show you guys the back version. All this is really doing is helping to stretch the muscle up in here in your bicep, which is also an important muscle when you're doing valve ploy. Always make sure to do both arms because it's important, so definitely do it again, the second arm. So now that your shoulder joint and your bicep muscle has been sort of stretched out and given a little bit of a warm up, you can now start to focus on your wrist. So simply just doing simple movements like this, um, you can pretend you're a belly dancer or whatever. Um, some people will also do this, which seems really weird, but it is to focus on the joints and the hands as well as the muscles, getting them more prepared for, um, you know, doing a lot more movement. The biggest important thing about doing warm-ups is to make sure that when you are doing any sports that it is, is that you're not going to get some sort of a cramp or you're not going to sprain yourself. And considering that we are doing valve point, it's very important to focus on the upper arms and the wrist area as well. Now when you are doing valve point at the start, your wrist will definitely get sore. Now depending on which hand you are mainly dominant, since I am right-handed, it's obviously going to be this hand, um, you are definitely going to feel an aching pain in around your wrist. So you don't want to push yourself too fast. Uh, and when you do start, you know, you just start doing some generic circle movements. But I'll get onto that in a couple of seconds. Now, if you're worried about your legs and you want to get more into stuff, um, some simple leg movements are, you know, just bringing the leg up and out, which I know it might look really weird. Um, but, you know, just pulling the muscle out and popping the hips. Um, there are other ones like, you know, just staying there, holding your leg up. Very simple, very easy. Uh, you can do the whole yoga set, but I'm not going to get too into that because I'm mainly going to be focusing on the arms and wrist movement. So now that I've talked a little bit more about that and how to warm up, I want to show you guys a little bit more as to some of the generic moves, um, what I call the basic moves when you want to start getting into veil point. 
So if there is a move that you guys don't feel comfortable with doing it, don't force yourself to do it because you could actually hurt yourself. And that's one thing that you want to keep in mind is your safety. Moving on with some bell play movements, um, I want to get you guys to sort of focus on things in a very slow fashion manner. I don't want you guys to, you know, start to get too fast or too heavy into it. When you do start to do those things, you are more prone to cause accidents to yourself or others around you. Now, if you guys haven't actually seen my video talking about um, how to do veil poi outside, I do talk about, you know, making sure about my surroundings. As you guys can see, around me is a lot of quite open space. I'm doing this outside in an area where it's not too windy. Um, I've got a lot of wind blocks, so I'm not going to be in any harm. Also, since I am outside and I am using bales, I do make sure that my surrounding area on the ground doesn't have any sticks because if your bale do drop slightly to the ground, they are more liable to pick up sticks. So you don't want to do that too much because you can ruin the bale as well as injure yourself or others around you. So to start off with some simple movements. If you're someone like me and you want to use the inner part or the circle, as I call it, key chain, um, you can do so, which is what I will be. But if you are a beginner, I do suggest using the tabs up here. Now, if you didn't see earlier how I did it, it's just simply slipping your hand in, turn it over, and there you guys go. So I will be showing you guys how I spin with the use of this rather than using it in here. Now you sort of want to get the use of feeling your bell, so you can just simply do this. You can do it in front of you, you can do it to the sides. Um, personally, I would prefer in front of you because that way you know you're not going to actually hit yourself in the face. And just get, you know, the feel of things. You might flick it up and down, you know, stick to the whole routine. Um, and of course, you know, just make sure that you feel comfortable with how you're doing it. See so it again, um, just make sure that when you are doing this, you feel comfortable with how you are proceeding um, and you're not going to be endangering yourself in any way. So now that you've done that you might want to start doing proper full circles. Now you can do this either way whether it be clockwise or anti-clockwise to stop and go into a different way. Just simple, just slow it down. This is really good practice for getting used to um, the different motions but you can focus on whatever way feels comfortable first before you start getting off to doing more you know, um, clockwise or anti-clockwise. One of the first movements I learned besides this was obviously the figure eight, which is very simple. Now, as you guys can see, the veil is going around the side. It's not a figure eight in front of me. Um, the reason for that is because it can be a little bit more tricky. For your arm, if you don't feel comfortable with having it just dangling by the side, you can always have it up over here, which is what a lot of other veil toy artists will do, especially when they're doing moves such as a figure eight. Now you guys are probably all familiar with the figure eight and doing the full complete circle by now, so I'm going to teach you guys something a little bit more interesting. Now make sure to spin the way that you most feel comfortable. As you guys can see, I'm spinning into clockwise, um, and this movement has a variety of different names. People call it the pentacle, they call it the four leaf clover. Um, me personally, I just call it the flower because it is going literally in a circle and around. And so this was basically one of the first real movements that I learned. And how I'm doing this is I'm just doing still a circle, but I am moving my wrist more. So if you guys can notice the hand movement, as well as I am moving my arm. And I'm following a very similar circular rotation. Now, if you're not yet comfortable with doing that yet again, um, you can just focus on doing these simple movements. You can sort of you know, move your arm up and down, depending on how you yourself feel. But let's say you don't want to do that just yet with the veil poi, so you can start focusing on your hand. Simply just pretend you're holding something. You can use soft poi, um, which there'll be a link in the description as to how Nick Poi does his own. Um, very simple, very easy. You can use almost anything. Um, you don't have to you know, fork out 20 or different bucks for a single veil. So by doing this with your hand, just simple, spinning your hand around, um, you can focus more on the wrist or you can focus on, like I do, doing that, which is very simple, very easy, using all the muscles up here and along your arm. So again, um, use it with your hand. If you want to start doing the more difficult stuff, it's just simple, up, down, up, down. You're basically just doing a loop in a very big full circle. So before I go, there is one last simple trick that you guys can do now. You can do it by any different way. As I said, you hold it with this hand. It's basically doing a figure eight while holding the veil. Simply hold the veil on one end and put it on here on your hip. Then making sure that the veil is in front of you, just do some simple figure eights. As you guys can see, I am moving my body with the veil. Um, it is a little bit more of an intermediate movement, but it depends on how you yourself feel comfortable with doing this. You've probably seen belly dancers do these sorts of movements. 
Now that movement is a little bit more complex, but I will eventually start teaching you guys those in more intermediate stuff. As for now, I hope I've been able to answer as many of the basic questions that you guys have been asking me in how to start off with doing fails. Um, you just keep to the simple stuff. But again, there will be down in the description um, a couple of links to other Veilpoi artists, um, as well as Playpoi, because he does some phenomenal tutorials on how he does different moves. Yet again, thank you guys. Um, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, as well as that thumbs up, because that really helps me keep going um, and being motivated to create more videos to share with you guys. Also, don't forget to comment down below some questions that you guys might have, whether it be how to take care of a veil in particular, whether it be um, different movements. I will hopefully be able to show you guys the various movements that I, per se, do um, and movements that I favor as well. And it just really means a lot to know that, you know, you guys are appreciating the work that I'm doing and putting into all these videos and that they are being helpful to you guys. But for now, thank you guys for watching. I hope it's been very helpful and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.